My name is Ayes Muntari and I am from the Catalan Institute for Water Research based in Girona, Spain. In the next couple of slides, I'm going to explain to you the importance of understanding and managing extreme climatic events on sustainability of drinking water supply services. So do stick with me, don't run away. From time to time, newspapers, radio stations as well as television stations carry feature stories on droughts, storms, heat waves as well as extreme wildfire events across the globe. And I'm pretty sure at some point you might have picked either one or two of these stories. These are what we call extreme climatic events. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change has it on record that as climate is changing, so are the intensity, the magnitude, the frequency, and variability of these extreme events. And because of the dire consequences on water supply, they need to be fully comprehended and managed for sustainability of water supply. One key question which you need to answer is why are water supply managers so bothered about extreme climatic events? Well, it relates to source waters. For drinking water supply purposes, water can be drawn from rivers, from lakes, from reservoirs, or at times from the ocean. In cases where water is drawn from lakes or reservoirs, then there are two key issues which are of importance. The first relates to proliferation of cyanobacteria blooms, and the second relates to brownification as a result of suspended material present in the water. For proliferation of cyanobacteria blooms, the extreme events that might be at play might be heat waves, might be droughts, as well as storms. While for brownification, it's extreme precipitation, which is responsible for mobilization of particles from the catchment into the lake systems. All these conditions have implications in terms of cost as well as water safety. Thus, the occurrence of extreme climatic events leaves water supply authorities with two unpleasant scenarios to deal with. The first one is related to increased water treatment costs. The occurrence of high suspended solids and high dissolved organic carbon as well as smelly water might require more water treatment chemicals in order to contain the high contaminant loads into levels that are acceptable for human consumption. In other cases, the chemical treatment of water might not even result into a reduced contaminant load. For example, if water has a lot of dissolved organic carbon, the application of chlorine to such water to kill off harmful microorganisms results into formation of disinfection by products. These chemical compounds are potential cancer-causing agents and are highly regulated across the globe. That's if chemical treatment is incapable of reducing dissolved organic carbon concentrations, then water supply authorities are forced to invest into advanced treatment systems that are capable of reducing the risk of disinfection by products formation. All this in the end translates into high treatment costs, which might be passed on to the end users. In this project, we're doing three things in order to contribute knowledge on the subject matter. First, we have a long-term data set spanning over a period of 60 years for the take catchment, from which we are looking for extreme event signals of precipitation, drought, and heat wave conditions, and establishing causal relationships with water quality in order to understand which extreme events are relevant for our system. Such understanding is important for water supply managers in order to prioritize on management options that have the highest impact in reducing the effects of extreme events on water supply. Secondly, we carried a year-long sampling campaign across the South Saskatchewan and Pastoral Elizabeth chain to understand what drives the disinfection by product formation potential variability across the system. And the picture that you see on your left is the extraction stage in one of our sampling campaigns. Thirdly, we are developing a seasonal water quality forecasting tool by linking climate, watershed, and water quality models. That tool would be important for water supply managers in order to prepare them for the occurrence of these extreme events because no one can stop their occurrence. The best that we can do is to prepare for their occurrence and take the necessary steps to avoid their impact on water supply as well as water safety. So when this project is done, 
that's not the end of everything. The science show must go on. And that's why we're turning up to you at the moment. We live in an era where climate is already changing. And we believe that you have already been impacted by this extreme climatic event. At some point, your parents might already have paid high water bills as a result of this event. As a result, you had very little money left for candles, clothes, and some vacation. Or you might have been exposed to smell of water or water with disinfection by products. So we believe you should be concerned and take that step now. It was evolutionary, you are smarter than us. You are the people that might change the whole way we're doing science and engineering of water supply at the moment.